أحمد وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أفحسبتم أن ما خلقناكم عبثا وأنكم إلينا لا ترجعون الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا له العزة والجمال وله القدرة والكمال وصلي على النبي الكريم Today I want to talk about uh, philosophically speaking a very important topic and that is the topic of meaninglessness the paradox of meaninglessness we live in an age especially after world war 1 and world war 2 where the human uh, thinkers you can say the uh, the agents of the devils you can say but uh, anyway philosophers of different sorts started to talk about meaninglessness that life has no meaning life has no purpose life is pointless and so for this uh, I will refer to this verse of the Quran but first let me go over some of my notes that I wrote on the subject so that uh, I can express what I want to say properly think of a music with no sound or that has sound but it makes no sense it's all just noise right there's no harmony in this so this is what life is like to a lot of people in the modern world it's like it's like a lot of noise and it makes no sense there's no point to it there's no there's no harmony there's no there's no purpose where is this all going what is the purpose of life and so <clears throat> many people feel that way and so i will be sharing uh, about that uh, in fact let me uh read to you uh, uh, what one of the uh, people wrote uh, imagine a happy group of work and uh, morons a, imagine a happy group of morons who are engaged in work they're carrying bricks in an open field and as soon as they have stacked all the bricks at one end of the field they proceed to transport them to the other end this continues without stop every day every year they're busy doing the same thing one day one of the morons who now becomes an enlightened thinker, who becomes a armchair philosopher. One day he gets a suggestion from Shaitan, you can say. One day one of the morons stops long enough to ask himself, what is he doing exactly? He wonders, what purpose is there in carrying the bricks? And from that instance on, he's not quite as content with his occupation as he had been before. I am the moron who wonders why he's carrying the bricks. And this is what life in the modern times has become for a lot of people, is that it's meaningless, right? There's no, there's no purpose. There's no, there's no, and, and, and what I'm going to explain here is about the paradox of it all. And so I want to read to you another note. I'm sorry, mom. I've written this note several times in my head over the past 10 years. And this version finally feels right. I now believe that Hope is nothing more than delayed disappointment, which is wrong. I'll talk about hope in a little bit. I'm tired. I realize that I don't deserve to think this way because on paper I have a great life. I'm fortunate. I eat good food. I travel. I live in a great city. However, all of this seems trivial to me. There's no, like, it's all meaningless. We're all going to die. At the first it's a first world problem, I know, but I often feel alone when I'm in a room full of my best friends. I felt absolutely nothing during, I felt absolutely nothing during what should have been the happiest and darkest times in my life. No single conversation or situation has led me to do this. Okay. And of course, she's talking about do this, meaning write this note or suicide. <coughs> So, this idea that life is meaningless, there's no emotions, it's just chemicals, right? There's no beauty, it's just, it's just what we make out of, we give meaning to things ourselves. It doesn't inherently exist. There's no morals, there's no right, there's no wrong, there's no point. Who cares, right? Meaninglessness, our existence has no order, no purpose, no goal no teleological end meaning there's it's not going to any real end other than what we make our life 
to be whatever I'm a fireman because I want to be a fireman but there's no purpose beyond that like who cares and what's interesting you know when you look at some of the um, so you have this idea of alienation and nihilism and atheism and, and meaninglessness and I take meaninglessness because specifically it has to do with the field of psychology which I'm going to share with you in a little bit but the all of these on the one side but then look at how man creates his modern story like the story of evolution right the story of evolution is what that we were you know uh, we were insects and then we became rats and then monkeys and human beings this is in this is embedded in human beings to be teleological that everything is going to one big climax climactic point okay you can, it's it's literally evolution it's literally from one stage to the next of triumphant victory right this is embedded in the human archetypes in the human nature and so it can't be escaped and so let's go back quickly to meaningless we make our own purpose in life this is what nietzsche said nietzsche said you you make your own purpose in life you you get the to have the the choice of making a choice about yourself Yet, despite our ability to do so, we talk about a sense of meaninglessness, right? Death makes everything meaningless. You're like a dream from long time ago that is forgotten today. So you had a dream 20 years ago. Who, ca who cares about that? You're like that person. You're, you're like that dream. It's meaningless. No purpose. Okay? And so the Quran asks a soul-searching question. What is the soul-searching question the Qur'an asks for those people who think life has no, pur has no purpose? أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ <laughs> Did you calculate after looking at everything, after observing everything? Did you consider your own inner self, your own inner voice? أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا Did you think we created you without purpose? And if you we created you without purpose, then there is a paradox. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّ مَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ Do you think He will not return back to us? And so let me go a little bit into the paradox of this idea that everything is meaningless. Everything has, there's no point to anything. Death makes everything meaningless. You're a dream from a long time ago that is today forgotten. The Quran asks a soul-searching question because it's an a priori. It's an archetype. You can't escape it. Man wants meaningfulness. Okay? The problem of we are not from anywhere and we're not going anywhere at all. There's no journey. There's no search. There's no quest. There's no start. There's no end. It's all the same. Nothing. It's all nothing. Okay? And so when you search, for example, the idea of meaningfulness, for example, I'm going to give you examples of how important this subject is, okay, <coughs> for human beings. And I'm just going to give you titles of the many <coughs> hundreds of books written on this. How can you have a meaningful life? How can you have an existence that is meaningful, that has a point, that has a purpose? Why does man even ask this question if man has no purpose in life? Right? And that's the paradox. The paradox is, you got someone saying to you, life has no purpose. Well, if life has no purpose, why are you talking about life having no purpose? Death doesn't matter. But yet, death scares us all. Death is a mystery to us all. Death defines how we see the meaninglessness of this life when we see death as our end itself. Why are we obsessed with this subject of meaninglessness? You know, a dog doesn't say, hey, I don't see the point of life. He just lives his life. Why are you so stuck on meaninglessness? So here's a journey, a map of archetypes to find the lost purpose in a sea of meaninglessness. Right? Uh, the sunny nihilist, a declaration of pleasure of pointlessness. There's no point. It's, it's a pleasure. But it's trying to make something out of something positive out of something that is ultimately and utterly dark, right? And you can just see that. The art of living a meaningless existence. Why write a book if 
the idea of meaningfulness is not important. You're teaching people how to live a meaningless life, whereas naturally man wants to live a meaningful life, and you want to teach man that it's okay to have a pointless life. Just accept that as truth. Accept that as the the enlightened way of living. But yet it goes against human nature because throughout history man has sought religion for what reason? Man has sought the divine for what reason? For the point of having a point in life. The art of living a meaningless existence. Ideas from philosophy that change the way you think. Okay? In praise of failure, four lessons in humility, a stranger, an existential journey of alienation and irony. Alienation is a word used in sociology, especially by Marxists and so on and so forth, that talk about how man has been alienated, has been removed from himself and from his fellow uh, beings, fellow humans, right? That we're alone even when we're with people. Right? We've become estranged from our own selves and from the people around us. And then these people, they see life as what? They see life as meaningless. There's no purpose. Right? Uh, <clears throat> it's like you're carrying bricks from one side to the other side and you're just doing mundane stuff that has no, no real goal other than what you're making it, which itself is pointless. The meaning of meaningless. Okay? The Great Quest, an Invitation to an Examined Life and a Sure Path to Meaning. Okay, so somebody wrote, why are we writing on, the, okay, uh, man is condemned to be free. Meaning, it, life has no meaning, and this is what Nietzsche said. You're condemned to be free. You, you choose your own path. You make your, if you want to be a firefighter, this is actually Nietzsche's book, uh, Nihilism, okay, uh, a search for meaning, a short history, okay. Uh, meaningfulness, like a, a developmental psychotherapy in the pursuit of mental health, making sense of nonsense, bridging the, the logical bridge between science and spirituality, right? On insignificance, the loss of meaning in the post-material age. And you can go on and on and on in, in uh, uh, you can go on and on in the field of psychology, sociology, philosophy, with man's occupation with the idea of what's the point? What's the purpose? But the very point that you ask this question, what is the point, means, and that man has asked about this, that what is the purpose of life? What is the meaning of life? What is the point of life? The very point. This is the paradox that you can look at the universe you know, as a thinker, as an enlightened thinker, and say, there's, it's all meaningless. Oh, there's no right, and there's no wrong, and there's no, there's no real emotion. It's just hormones, and, you know, there's no, there's no reality. It's just, it's just all nonsense. It's all disharmony. It's all just a bunch of noise. There's no harmony in any of this. And yet, you will make the point after saying, after claiming, after protesting, after writing, after uh, exclaiming, okay, this life has no purpose. But the very fact you said that, the very fact you raised this point, the very fact that human beings are obsessed with this question, shows that man, definitely, whether exists, uh, meaningfulness exists or not, but you, man is definitely obsessed, man is hardwired, to what? To look for meaningfulness. Something that connects us all. Something that helps us find us our real selves. Something that tells us about our journey. Where are we and where are we going? What is the point of all this? What is the purpose of all this? And the very fact that man would say, I don't, there's no purpose in life. There's, it's all meaningless. There's no harmony. You know, the very fact you would say that questions the very validity of your point that you're making a big point about you know they're all entire philosophies on just this very idea like um let me just uh you know death makes everything meaningless you're like a dream from a long time ago that was is forgotten today and the problem you know we're not from anywhere we're not going anywhere the paradox is meaningfulness is how much we're so obsessed with meaningfulness that we want there to be meaning okay 
and a note on emotion of hope hope remember what that lady said that uh, there's no hope uh, hope is an emotion that exists in response to the existence of something negative you only have hope when you see something negative this is and and uh, definitely refer to the hadith where Allah created Jannah and Jahannam and Allah talks about hope and how Allah created hope as a response to hell. We're so obsessed with death and its value to us that it affects us. You see, this is the paradox that we va we give value to everything around us. We give value to the pillow we have, right? This is, this is meaningfulness. We give value to our water, <coughs> our car ride. We look for value. We look for meaningfulness, right? We look at the scenery. It has a value. You have uh, some tool you really like has value to you. And so people that look at life and then look at hardship in life and suffering in life and death in life, and they take the aggregate of that and they say, well, compared to everything I give meaningful, this just completely takes away the meaningfulness the purpose and the point of everything. But it is completely illogical from the perspective that it is a paradox that when you make this point, when you make this point, the very fact you make this point, the very fact you're obsessed with this point, the very fact that in the field of sociology and in in in, in the field of uh, in the field of uh, psychology and philosophy, there's so many words that mean the same point nihilism alienation meaningless death atheism so many words for the same basic idea because we cannot escape it we want meaningfulness whether you agree it exists or not <coughs> but we definitely desire it so we we cannot escape from the idea for of looking for meaning that is that is not that's beyond the making up of our own idols we can say our own like i want to be a fireman or right and we 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 are human beings and as human beings we give value to everything around us our car our food we look for meaningfulness right uh does a dog think hmm what's the point let me see if my, my life makes sense no why is a human stuck with such a deep notion and need and need for such an idea as meaningfulness to which then you have to say but we can go beyond this thing that's within us by being rational and let's just work against this and say there is no point there is no exist real existence uh, or purpose of existence this is why this is not why all history humans is this not why all history humans wanted religion it's hardwired on in us to say the least this is the paradox that when you say there's no purpose, you're emphasizing there's no purpose is almost like you're speaking against what you're hardwired to believe and therefore you're emphasizing against it. And yet, uh, interestingly enough, from a perspective, it is also true that there is no point, there is no purpose other than one. So, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha, there's no point, there's no purpose. La maqsuda illallah. La matluba illallah. La mahbuba illallah. There's only one real point, and that is la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. And so in, in, in a sense, that, but the problem is the way the nihilists do it, or the atheists do it, they say there's no point in anything, and they make themselves the center of the universe. We have the choice to now choose what is morality. We have the choice now to make our own idols and break them when we want and make new idols. And when you say, La ilaha illallah, you say, well, you know, nothing truly has value without the real. They didn't have value for Allah as Allah ought to have value. Allah is the only true value. He is the point. He's the center. And so there's no purpose other than Allah. There's no true love other than Allah. There's no true, uh, uh, you can say, meaningfulness other than Allah. There's no, uh, uh, nothing to be desired other than Allah. In this context, everything becomes insignificant. But you don't put make your ego the God. You put God as God. And... Uh, so that would be part of the Quranic philosophy. And so meaninglessness, um, so 
there is a point to life and that and then that point is everything and everything else is nothing okay and that point everything is Allah without Allah it's all pointless so in that point we kind of agree but we don't agree with putting Allah at uh, that the ego is the center okay when Allah with Allah everything else becomes utterly insignificant meaningless self and ego by saying there's no point we make ourselves the center ourselves the only agency of choice and we make ourselves gods when we say there's nothing there's no point who cares you know you make yourself your god only with a sound purpose meaningfulness well-being a lost centered or god-centered life does life have meaningfulness and it's teleological role inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun that we are from Allah and we're returning back to Allah again and again and again so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks now this question that I wanted to get to afahasibtum did you think annama khalaqnakum abathan did you think that we created you without purpose in vain without any any purpose right did you think that you were created without any purpose <coughs> So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Afahasibatum, did you think? Anama khalaqnakum abathan, did you think we created you without a purpose? We created you in vain? Wa annakum and that ilayna la turja'un, that you won't return back to us? Fata'ala Allahu al maliku al haq. So Allah is He who is Maliku al haq, the true king. La ilaha illahu wa rabbu al arshil kareem. There's no divine, no power, no authority other than that Rabb, who is Rabbul Arsh al Karim, who is the Lord of the generous and noble and dignified throne of His that He created. So, this idea of everything is meaningless, this obsession that man has had with looking for meaning and wanting meaning and then saying there is no meaning is a paradox because why? It's a paradox because the very point, you, the very reason you ask this question shows that it's hardwired in us that that we want meaningfulness in life. And so if you feel hungry, then there must be food. If you're hungry, then there must be a stomach. If you want meaningfulness, then there must be a truth out there. Your job is to find that truth. Your job is to embrace that truth. Your job is to surrender to that truth. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ونساء المسلمين والمسلمات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.